As a deer hunter, I want to know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. Today's Deer and Wildlife Stories comes to you from a very historic place down in Sweet Home, Alabama. We're at the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains and back in the, well, the Civil War days there was lots of history being made here. And today there's a different kind of history being made. It's history in the deer industry. I'm going to introduce you to my friend Rusty Weaver and you're going to see why they call this place Sweet Home, Alabama. My name is Rusty Weaver. I'm the owner of Weaver Two Whitetails right here in Etowah County, Alabama. Unlike a lot of deer farmers, it's not my full-time job. I'm actually a lawyer in Birmingham, Alabama, but deer are my passion and deer farming is what consumes most of my spare time and thoughts. Our farm was established in 2006. We got our first deer in 2007, and since then, Weaver Two Whitetails has produced some really good bucks. Let me tell you about Rusty Weaver. I met him about six years ago, and I didn't have any idea. He is an attorney by trade, but uh, I don't know Rusty as an attorney. I know him as a deer enthusiast, and he is absolutely as nuts about whitetail deer as anybody I know. I've known Keith for many years now and he had an opportunity to meet my oldest son Michael when he was a young child and Keith was taken aback by his enthusiasm for whitetails even at a very early age and he stayed in touch with, with both me and Michael and kept up with his progress with regard to the deer business and it's important for me to have the kids around Keith because he's such a great steward for this business and for deer and the opportunity for the boys to be around him and learn the things that he brings to the table because of his vast knowledge and because of his great involvement in the industry is something that's very special to me and my family. After I had the opportunity to visit a couple of deer farms and was exposed to the industry, the opportunity to raise a whitetail from birth all the way through growing a majestic rack was just an opportunity that I couldn't pass up and I wanted to be personally involved in that. So we purchased our first does and started that endeavor and now we have quite a few does and a large herd of majestic bucks. Let me tell you about lifestyle of a deer farmer. I mean, li lifestyle of a deer farmer, this is like living the life. Okay, you're living with deer and deer are just awesome critters. Um, you have to work hard, you have long hours and stuff, but you share it with people that you love. You share it with people that love deer and, and you know, you get up early in the morning and you go out and spend time with your deer and you feed your deer and you look at your deer and you come back in the afternoon and you feed your deer and you look at your deer and you dream about your deer and you, you just with your deer. And the, the cool thing about deer farming is that you really can get away from the, from the hectic day to day uh, battles that we all have to do out there and especially can you imagine Rusty is an attorney so is it any wonder that he uses this as a stress relief and he wants to be out here more in his law office I guarantee you that. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by the North American Deer Farmers Association, New Dart, 
Newport Labs, the North American Deer Registry, Beam Fence Company, Shock Effect, GMS, Deer Guardian Misting Systems, Record Rack Deer Feeds, T3 Whitetails, and Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics. One of the most important things this farm does for me is involve my family. I have a wife and two young boys. I have a 12-year-old named Michael, six-year-old named Major. They're very involved with the day-to-day -day operations of the farm. They too have developed a passion for whitetails, and it's a great opportunity that we've been blessed with to work together in something that we all love. deer on the right is Express Shadow. He's an Express Overshadow three-year-old. My goodness gracious, look at him. What a frame on him. He's an eight by eight this year. Okay. Now he's a three-year-old, but these other guys down in here, these don't look like they're three. They look like they're two. What's the deal with that? This is a group of two-year-olds and Express Shadows in here just to keep them from fighting amongst each other. Wow. You know, I'm looking at these guys, and while a lot of people would probably come to a pen and immediately start looking for the biggest one, I kind of look, take the opposite. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look for the smallest one because uh, that's just what I do. I mean, uh, the smallest one, I think, is, is as maybe unusual as the biggest. And what I mean by that is if you had 10 deer born that are all of exceptional genetics, you're gonna have one that's the smallest, you're gonna have one that's the biggest. So what I like to do is say, okay, I like to look for the small one, then I like to look for the big one, and then I like to get rid of those guys. And I look at all the guys in the middle, because by and large, statistically, those are the ones that as a deer producer, we're gonna produce, those in the middle. Yeah, we want to produce that one on the top end, but we're going to, all of us produce one on the bottom end. There's always a final, final one. Okay, but the ones in the middle, your deer by and large, average right there is two year olds. I don't know of a deer farmer in the country that wouldn't be very, very pleased to have deer looking like that at two years old. That's good. Now, how long have you been breeding? About seven years. We got our first bucks in the spring of 07. Wow. So are the one year olds this year better than these guys were when they were one? Yes, definitely. If they're not, we're, we're not doing something right. Listen to that, if you wanna be a deer farmer, every single year what happens is if you're doing things right, you're stacking genetics upright. Every year, your deer get better and better. And so the younger the deer, the better genetics, just simply because you've got them stacked upright. So, all right, well this is a very impressive pen of two-year-olds and uh, Express Shadow is absolutely unbelievable. Well, why don't, uh, why don't you take me over, let's take a look at the one-year-olds. Let's go.
This is our probiotic supplement. It's a micro encapsulated probiotic shock effect. We've been using this on our bucks for several years. Very pleased with the results. We don't grow bucks here without it. Uh, Mark from Alabama writes, I have 500 acres of deer woods, but don't have any nice bucks. What is the quickest way to get them? I don't want to wait for decades for big deer. Mark, that's a problem lots of people have all over the country. That's where deer farmers come in. If you're in Alabama, you're in luck because Rusty Weaver can handle your problem that quick. What I would recommend you do, you need to put up a high fence. And the reason why a high fence is nothing more than a management tool. You've got to manage what's on your property. When you put up a high fence, you can call Rusty, and Rusty will be happy to make a deal with you, and he can bring deer over, bread, does, fawns, bucks. I mean, uh, that's the cool thing about de dealing with a deer farmer. They can, you know, you can make a deal on whatever kind of deer you want. Anyway, you put them in, the, in your area, and you start your own hunting preserve, and it just doesn't get any better than that, and you don't have to wait decades to see big deer. Put it there. You got it. If I was so lucky, I'd have yearlings like that. Holy smokes! We are very proud of this group. Take a look at that. Because what you're seeing right there, this man has been in the deer farming business for seven years. Seven years and he is producing that. That's unbelievable. Look at the frame on that one deer. Who is he out of? That's an XLT, son. Holy cow! Now, if that deer was in the wild, somebody would hammer down on him like right now. And that's what's a shame because, folks, it's genetics, 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 genetics. And I think that hunters, under, probably more than likely than not, more hunters are watching our show than deer farmers, okay? And hunters, pay attention because those guys right there, if you took them out at one year old, they'd never have an opportunity to breed. And take a look at that. When we say genetics, I mean, nutrition is a big key, but the genetics, that's phenomenal. Okay, that's out of XLT. Do you have any other XLT sons in here? All these big frames, wide big frames, long tines, those are all XLT sons. Come on. Several in that group right there, over 200. If these are sons of XLT, it's important to take a look at, look at all these big guys. And we talk about genetics. These big guys are the result of their daddy. Their daddy mixed with the good blood on the mama side is producing that. And so, that, now these deer right here, if if somebody in Alabama is watching, wants to wants to purchase some deer off of this farm, you can call Rusty Weaver, okay? Or if you live outside of Alabama and you want to purchase semen from any of these guys or any of the other deer on the farm, you can contact Rusty Weaver. But I'm just telling you right now, XLT, he's got to be the man if he's putting that on the ground right there. He's doing it, doing it consistently. How do you keep track of all your data? We have software game management systems that we enter all of our deer in as they're uh, born fawns, information regarding sire, the dam, and keep up with brothers and sisters of, of those deer so that we can have a good picture of what they are genetically. My gosh, and so the, so the, the two-year-olds that we just looked at, okay, those two-year-olds, I'm looking how good they are. At one year old, they weren't this good? No, this is definitely a butter crop. <laughs> This right here, what you're looking at here, folks, is something unbelievable. Anybody watch our show for a length of time has known we always talk about anchor does, anchor does, anchor does. Well, let me tell you something. XLT has got to be an anchor buck. Let's go see him. He's getting it done. Let's go. Ooh, baby. Now it's time for the Beam Fence Minute. 
Tying off a corner post or a gate post is really important to have a good straight looking fence when you're done. I'm Mark Bean from Bean Fence Company and let me show you how we do it. So the proper way to put these posts in the ground is the deeper the better. If you don't have good depth, when you begin to put pressure on that post and try to pull a wire straight, you're going to pull that fence over every time or your, or your corner post. You've got to make sure that that depth is deep. That's the key to a good strong corner and the key to a good strong gate as well. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to strip the wires off and get them clean, get all the, get all the stay wires off. Then we're going to wrap it around. It's really important that we want to keep that wire straight up and down on that post. All the verticals have to match up with that post to keep it straight. Don't want to have any angles, it's got to be nice and straight. So when you're tying off at that gate post or corner post, make sure that the verticals are straight up and down with your post that you're pulling off. That way when you pull, each wire is going to come even and your wire is going to look a lot better that way. On even wire, your wire is not going to pull tight all through the, throughout the roll. For more helpful tips on building a fence, go to our website at beamfence.com. so big seriously where is he he's right there oh laying down look at him oh holy cow rusty now how old is he he's growing out his four right right now xlt right there folks i mean look how big that buck is right there now last year at three what did that deer score at three he was 543 and three eighths and do you have a picture of him i do Oh my goodness. So what do you think he is this year compared to last year? He definitely has a bigger frame. Mm -hmm. He's longer. Uh, overall bigger, I just, what he'll score with all the kickers and, and stickers, I don't know, but he's definitely bigger frame this year. A lot of deer are not done growing until oh, sometime in September, and you can take a look at him and Look at the, the way you can tell if a deer is done growing or not, look at the end of their points. And if the end of their points are kind of bulbed out, they've still got some growing to do. And he's getting close to being done, but on a, a little bit of him, he's still got some pushing to do, doesn't he? Yeah, he's bulbed up on a few of his up pines. I, th I think he'll go on for another week or so. Oh my goodness. Well, who are these other guys in the pen with him? I mean, there's a, a few other bucks in with him. We're growing out three of his yearlings with him. Boy, those are some nice deer, and folks, uh, the reason to have them in here with him, deer are real social animals. They don't like being alone, uh, and so when you wind up having a lone deer, uh, that's not good. Put some other deer in with them. Like I said, they, they really are social animals, so those other guys in here with him, and every one of those is a nice yearling buck. I mean, you start looking at these guys right here, folks, look at these guys right here, and you start adding on the yearling bucks that we just showed you in the yearling pen. I mean, across the board, XLT is getting the job done. He's done it with every different kind of dough we've bred, bred him to, every single one's producing. So he is no question, he is a producer. Now, I remember the day that you bought him. Now, XLT was not born on, uh, on this farm, okay? Rusty bought him, and Rusty being a new deer farmer, had to go to, you don't just go to a deer store to buy a deer, you wind up and go to a farm like right here or you can go to a deer auction and you actually bought XLT in an auction. Tell everybody why you did that. Well, we were looking for an XL son to establish that bloodline here and cross it with some of our foundation does and we were at a deer auction and the opportunity presented itself and we took a chance on him and it turned out to be a great decision. He's been a wonderful buck for us and has produced so well with our does. Very happy with him. Well, that deer has turned into something really nice and again, it's all pedigree. Pedigree, pedigree, pedigree. It's like uh, if you're in the real estate business, they say location, location, location. Well, in the deer business, it's pedigree, 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 and XLT has got the pedigree. Now, you do have plenty of semen on him? We do. We've got conventional semen. It's packed very tightly, uh, rated excellent, and we'll also have uh, sex semen available this fall.
You know, we keep talking about pedigree all the time, about how important it is, but there is one thing that is also important, and that's performance. And you've got to have a deer that gets the job done. No doubt about it, the XLT gets the job done. So if people want more information on Weaver 2 Whitetails, give them a phone number. They can give us a call at 205-529-9377. Thanks for having us out. Thank you. I'd like to thank you all for watching another edition of Deer and Wildlife Stories. And right now, I promised a couple little boys I'm going to play some football with them. I hope they're not too rough on them.